So, ladies and gentlemen, today's Tuesday, the 4th of June, because tomorrow the Acolyte drops on Disney+. Plus. And guess what? I'm not even going to pay £4.99 for the month to watch that drivel. Nope, yours truly is going to be torrenting the crap out of it because I heard something happens in episode three, which made me go... Ah! But today, folks, I went to my local job center expecting to be confronted by a person of diversity who's arrogant, snotty-nosed, rude. But instead, I mean, shock horror, folks, it was a white chick. Not any old white chick, Virginia McKenna white chick. This woman was absolutely based as F. And we just sat there slapping our thighs, slapping my thighs, slapping her thighs. Well, I wasn't actually doing that to her because she would have punched me in the face and get me thrown out by OCS security. But I liked her. It was refreshing. She gave me some great advice that a fucking diverse person couldn't give me in a million years because they like to keep them things to themselves. I was right. Kung Fu hot dog must be stopped. <laughs> well, space fans, exciting news, huh? And there's even more in part two. On today's episode of Kung Fu Hot Dog. Okay, you can come. <laughs> Are you coming? Kind of busy right now. And I'm coming for it, Ken. I'm coming for the fucking money, you piece of shit. I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling. In the ass end of space, even aliens watch Jason King with Kung Fu Hot Dog. This is the greatest show I've seen in my life. Duke Nukem likes this guy. People, I get the same feeling, so I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> so yesterday, I made this video right here to do with Abubakar Salim. Oh yes, Mr. Insufferable, you won't play Tales of Kinzira Zao because it's dog shit. Probably is a good game to others, but when I saw it, I just thought, nah, you know what? This is all virtue signaling. I haven't got time for this nonsense. But one of my subscribers drew my attention to this particular individual, Mr. Salim, Mrs. Salim, because that Hekaz said Salim works for sweet baby spin-off called Bebe Sucre. So I thought, hmm, I should go to the UKGov website and check it out. Now, of course, what I'm about to show you is all out there in the public eye, but it's not an exclusive. This is not a mic drop video because Mark Kern, aka Grums, had already covered this a month ago. But I've got a little bit of an update. So, yeah, thank you very much, that Hekaz, for pointing it out to me. Otherwise, I would have been none the wiser. So, here we have, ladies and gentlemen, the file copy certificate of incorporation of a private limited company, Bebe Sucre Limited. So given that the company's house in Cardiff on the 27th of April, 2023. And I've done control F here to find Mr. Salim's name. And there you have it. Let's go to the first page here. He's oh, so this is a 31 page document. He only appears in two pages. So there you have it, plain as day, Abubakar Ali Salim recorded as the at the company's registered office in good old England date of birth well interestingly enough uh, he's born in January 1993 but he doesn't want us to know when his birthday is. Um, I guess that's to protect his information, but considering we already know his name, and he was the company director. You heard correct. I'm speaking in the past tense. British? Yes, he's an knock. Yeah, whatever. We don't care about that. And then we get to this part here. So again, his name appears, this time with the alley missing. And uh, yeah, that's the generic address they provided. I'm assuming that this address here in Sudbury is probably like an industrial warehouse type of address. So if you went there in person, it'll be very hard to find. Um, number of shares, 
25 valued at one pound per share. I don't think it's one pence because if it were, it would then be 0 0.01 pence. Uh, but I've got a friend of mine who's an accountant, so it, when he watches this video, if he thinks I've actually given you misinformation, he will correct me and I will then edit the description of this video. But of course, we do get to the other thing that I wanted to talk about, the termination of Abubakar Salim as company director. It all happened on the 12th of March, 2024. Now I think what may have happened here, I'm gonna give you two reasons. Probably Mrs. Salim's acting career started to pick up and couldn't commit to his duties as a company director for Bebe Sucre Limited. And maybe there was a disagreement between him and the other company directors. Maybe he wasn't seeing that pot of gold getting any bigger for him. I don't know why I'm likening this company to a leprechaun's absolute favorite treasure, but that's the kind of weird individual I am. But there was another name I wanted to draw your attention to, which was Amy Lee Shaw. Um, she's British. She's also another director for, I think she was, or she still is. I believe she's still going as a director because let me just go back to this page here. To, yep, she is still the director at the moment or one of the board of directors for this awful spin-off of Sweet Baby Inc. But of course, Amy Lee Shaw, if you just Google her name, this is what you come across. She is a writer and script coordinator, more like saboteur, with indie and triple A games. She was recently a junior writer and script coordinator for Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League and is currently a writer and narrative designer for Sweet Baby Stink. So if you see her name attached to a video game, the alarm bells are going to start ringing like never before. Now, if you think this is cringe, and yes, Abubakar Salim, he's no longer working for Bebe Sucre Limited. Well, good for him anyway. I guess he's got better things to do. So this article dropped last night. Warner Brothers Games launches new, wait for it, women and non-binary leadership program in order to, oh no, I don't want to read this, append or upend the bell end, the gaming industry's male dominated characterization. So when I read that, I am, well, there's two, it's twofold for me. One, you can't have any more beefy looking, badass, white straight men in video gaming like Nathan Drake or Chris Redfield. When Warner, because to me, this spells the end for Bruce Wayne. We know he got shot dead in Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. We know that. So any hope, any expectation of a brand new Batman game coming out on a video console near you, it's it's not going to happen. I'm sorry to disappoint you folks. You can save all the foul litter and rubbish for later on, but that's the way I take it. I also look at this statement as saying if you're launching a program for women and non-binary, which in itself is the, one of the most ridiculous and divisive terms I've ever heard, does that mean then that if you're a trans man, in other words, you're a woman who went from that biologically to a man scientifically, that you've got a chance of getting in? Or do you have to be a man or a woman who doesn't know what they identify as, but if you check on the box, I'm non-binary, you're gonna get a shoe through the door. Well, Warner Brothers, I've got a message for you. No one cares about this program. All of your future video games are gonna be dog shit. I mean, Hogwarts Legacy, is that going to be tainted with this? I, I don't know, this is a bit of a worry. It is a live service debacle because nobody gives a shit about live service video games. I mean, does Warner Brothers actually think this is a win? Is it a massive gotcha for the matriarchy? Do they really think that's going to get their games on our platform? I, I guess, you know, when you look at the bigger scope of things, you know, Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest, I don't know if it's going to tie in with that. I mean, Jeff Keighley, 
I trust him as much as I trust Todd Howard. You know, that's the level of trust uh, and disdain I have for those gentlemen. Revealed the public courtesy of built-in contributor Bridget Hogan on May the 22nd, following the conclusion of its inaugural six-month run, the leadership program reportedly engaged 25 women and non-binary leaders from across Warner Brothers Games, 11 global studios, and global publishing and central teams. Wow. <gasps> <laughs> with the goal of cultivating career development opportunities for <laughs> underrepresented individuals within the gaming sector, elevating diverse voices to leadership roles and shaping a more inclusive future for the industry. At Warner Brothers, you dog shit. This is not doing anything. It's a boring mission statement. I don't care. Did you send another memo? Yeah. What did I do with it? I shoved it up my ass because Bill Lumberg from Office Space told me to do that. Ooh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. Through a blend of structured workshops and candid conversations, Participants found the safe space <laughs> to share experiences and support one another. Or let me give you a hug or let, let me support you. Beyond professional growth, the program sparked personal revelations. What, not controversy? Leading participants to prioritize self-care and embrace opportunities for continuous learning. What's weird about this paragraph? It's a lot of touchy-feely language. Like, what are you trying to sell, sell us here, Warner Brothers? Is it like more ideology that we don't really care about at this stage of life? In discussion of his new leadership program, or her leadership program, Hogan reached out to three female attendees of its first official event for their thoughts on its offerings and effectiveness. If you're a res hang on, if you're resistant to a program like this, maybe consider it from a position of self-care, opined Jessica Dersheen, a senior producer for WB Games' upcoming Wonder Woman. Because we know for a fact, this is a Wonder Woman that's gonna be all covered up. She looks like Ben Grimm from The Thing, and I don't give three shits. It's from Monolith Studios, so I have no high hope. I tell you what, when they release a trailer for that game, what should get ratioed to hell and back. I mean, it's the same model that they use for Suicide Kill, the Justice League. So I think it's going to be uh, a version of that. That Wonder Woman looks all right. I mean, look at this. This Wonder Woman's okay. It's fine. But any hopes that we might get a great Wonder Woman game evaporated many, many years ago. Had they developed that game in about 2009, 2010, it would have been a different kettle of fish altogether. But they, oh my God, holy shit, that Harley Quinn is an abomination, folks. I mean, she makes the ugliest women in Norway, who are still more attractive, by the way, more beautiful than what she appears to be in this photograph right here. Who's ringing me? No one's ringing me. What's going on there? Stop vibrating, you dirty phone. Yeah, so again, this is like, you know, the matriarchy holding the flag you know it's holding the flag of ideology you know we're going to take over video games i'm telling you ladies and gentlemen back in the good old days of video gaming a lot of men were involved because you know why it's passion geeks the same guy you called the geek at school or college and said you're not going to get very far in life then went on to become a very successful video game developer bought and bought himself a mansion got a ferrari or lamborghini Got himself a beautiful couple of birds by his side. You know, women, fit, busty, natural, organic women. And the same bullies at school or college who are picking on him, who are now second-rate businessmen or working in your local McDonald's or a shelf stacker at your supermarket. Yeah, what are you doing now? So what I'm saying is, folks, men were ruling the roost when it came to video gaming. And of course, there were significant key women who contributed to video gaming. I'm not obviously lambasting their efforts at all. They're all worthwhile and well noted. But when it comes to 
modern day gaming. Yeah, you know what, ladies? You know we can shove your modern day attitude. We don't give three shits, I tell you that much. Uh, but one person who I do give a shit about was that lovely woman who I met today at the job center, my advisor. She was like, this microphone actually, pure as the driven snow. And I loved my time with her. She was an absolute delight. What wasn't delightful, folks, was this video I had to make today. As some people have pointed out in the comments, uh, you really do have to sit through, or me, they're talking about, all is cringe just for our benefit. Well, I do it for you folks, because like Brian Adams, everything I do, I do it for you. And by the way, folks, depending on when this video drops, I've got another one coming out later on. It's going to be a much more later edition uh, because it's got some saucy stuff in it. Well, not that kind Well, there's a bit of that sauce and there's a bit of some other sauce. Um, and it's going to be a good one, hopefully. It's going to be 30 minutes long. So I'd advise you when you do watch it, have yourself a tub of popcorn and a glass or jug of coke and enjoy the merriment that will befall your entertainment tonight but if i were you and if you were me you should come back for the next video